She's so cute. <laughs> Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to go ahead and share three fun and easy literacy games that you can play with just a few dice. I love sharing fun and easy to play dice and card games, in fact I have a whole playlist about it right here, but most of those games that I've shared, especially my dice ones, are involving math. So I wanted to go ahead and just share three fun and easy ones that you can swap in and out with all sorts of different literacy skills. If you've watched my videos before, then welcome back. And in case you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I am a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips, ideas, and activities with teachers just like you. My goal is always for these ideas and activities to be pretty easy and for you to take them and be able to use them in your classroom right away. So be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed to my channel, and let's get started. Okay, literacy activity number one is called roll a word, and I usually do this with two dice, but you could definitely do it with three, and let me show you how this one is played. Okay, so this is the most common way I play roll a word, and for this I would have them use two different dice here, and I would put the middle vowel already up there for my students. So this is something I've done in kindergarten and first grade. So obviously here we'd be practicing blending some CVC words and I would choose that middle vowel. So here I would have students roll the dice and they can pick, let's say we said, you know, it doesn't really matter which one goes where, honestly, but you could say the pink one was gonna be the first letter and the orange was going to be the last letter. So they would simply match it up and so p, a, t, pat. That is a real word. Now something exactly like I've written right here is what I would write on my small uh, whiteboard with my group. So they would all have the same type of mat and you could choose to, if you wanted to, have them each have their own whiteboard where they would actually write the letters down. So they would have written P, A, T, and then they could blend it together and then they would give me a thumbs up if it's a real word or a thumbs down if it is a nonsense word. This is a very simple game, so once students get the hang of it, you could switch out the letters, you could switch out that middle vowel, and students would just keep rolling, blending, and seeing if it is a real or nonsense word. Now, I've also done roll a word in a very similar way where I will have it be onset in rhyme. So let's pretend we were reviewing some, you know, short I little word families and some short U word families. Here again, you would roll two die, and you can determine which one is which. We'll say pink is for the onset, and we'll say orange is for the rhyme. They would roll it, two and two. We have s, it, sit, that is a real word. Again, you can have students just say it out loud if you want to, or you can have them actually write it down. You might have them do this independently if you give them this on the small whiteboard or on the big whiteboard. Go ahead and write it down and they can do it 10 times. That way you can see them write down 10 different words Put a little check mark if it is real or an X if it is not real. Activity number two is called roll and read and this one you only need one die for. And there are two different ways you can play this. Now when I was a K through two literacy teacher, we would do a lot of phonics instruction because we were trying to you know fill in the gaps and figure out where our students were having trouble decoding words. So we would do a lot of phonics instruction and after we would blend phonemes together, blend letters together, then I would have students read decodable sentences. So if you want to have them play roll and read in this sort of small group manner, you might do it like this. You can put a little sheet up like this and you just go ahead and make whatever sentences you know your students are working on. And I wouldn't actually even do a sheet like this. Instead, on my small whiteboard, I would just write one and write the sentence, two, etc. all the way through six. So they would have six different sentences that they're trying to read. So here's an example if students were working on CVC words, let's say, and if student went ahead and rolled a four, they would go ahead and read that sentence aloud. Now in a small group of three to four students, I would definitely have my students take turns. They would roll that die, read the sentence aloud so I could hear them actually decode it. And then again, even if they rolled that same sentence over and over, or if they already heard another student do it, I could at least hear their fluency and see how they are able to go ahead and decode the words in a nice, smooth manner. 
Now, speaking of fluency, another way you can play role in read is if you wanted to do this whole group, and let's say you were working on fluency with your students. Now, they might have a passage or a book that they're reading, but you can throw a sheet that looks like this up on the smart board, or again, you can just write these things on the board, and this would give students different ways to go ahead and read that sentence or that paragraph or whatever book you're wanting them to read. I usually do something like this when students are reading with a partner, and maybe they have to to read a sentence or a page from their book like a robot or like an alien. I also like throwing in different emotion words like angry, sad, tired, annoyed, and I like for students to go ahead and read that passage over and over in the different ways. So all students would have to do is go ahead and roll that die, find out how they're going to read that story or sentence, and then read it the way that they rolled. The last literacy activity I'm going to share today is called Roll a Sound. Now I like this one for phonemic awareness because students are having to isolate the either beginning, the middle, or the end phoneme, depending on how you play, and it's just a fun way for them to go ahead and do that and then also identify the grapheme that matches the phoneme. This one too you can play a few different ways, so let me show you how to do that. Okay, so for Roll a Sound it is as simple as this where you'll just print out six different images. Here I have some CVC clip art images that I already own. You could find any six images from the internet or maybe that you have anywhere and print them out and put numbers one through six on them. Now to do this, well, at least the way I do it with my kids, is you will just determine before the game starts if we are identifying the beginning, the middle, or the end sound of these pictures. So they'll go ahead and roll a die. One, sun. Let's pretend we are doing initial sound. So they would simply say s, roll again. Three, p, pot. So they would just keep doing that over and over as practice. Now again, once you had them do this a few times, either in small group, whole group, maybe you're individually working with one student, then you could switch it to the medial sound or the final sound. You could also go ahead and make this game a little trickier by having them add the grapheme to that sound that they're hearing. So you could play this the same way. But instead, students would have a recording sheet. I just made it look like this. Again, none of these games, I hope you are noticing, have to be like fancy. They can be pretty simple. So students could roll that die, three. Let's pretend we're doing a beginning sound again. And they would have to go ahead and write what makes that sound here. Again, that just takes it to the next level. And if you wanted to make this into a game game, students could play this with a friend and they could go back and forth until they get, you could say like five, five in any of the rows. And that would be like the winning category or that's when they can go ahead and stop playing the game. I was actually thinking Roll a Sound would be a very simple game for me to make a bunch of recording sheets like this with uh, images already inserted in here and we could do it for CVC words. It could go up to digraphs. So we, we could do this with a lot. So if this is something you are interested in, me making like a one sheet page of this type of game, let me know in the comments and I will see if I can go ahead and whip up a quick little unit for that. So there were three very simple literacy activities that you can do with just a few dice on hand. I loved doing all of those pretty much all the time in small groups. So maybe if you're doing guided reading groups or you're working on a specific phonics skill or whatever it happens to be, you can simply plug in those different skills you're working on, grab some dice and get to playing. There are so many other ways you can use dice to practice literacy skills. If you have any other literacy games that you love using dice, drop them down in the comments below or if you want to see more videos like this I have tons of other literacy skills you can use with dice go ahead and let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can make another video like this one as always I hope you enjoyed this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you did so I know subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video thanks guys bye